Hi, I'm CJ Almberg with TransWest Truck Trailer RV in Frederick, Colorado. So we've got a brand new Cimarron 3 horse sitting behind me. This is a 2024. Now, unfortunately, you cannot buy this trailer today. This is actually a custom order for a customer. Uh, so this one here is already sold, got a name on it. It's got a new home it's gonna find later this week. But this is a unique trailer, so we wanted to show you a lot of the options and cool features they did to this trailer. Now, before we start walking through it, let's go ahead and take a look at the drawing so I can kind of show you how the trailer itself lays out. So again, it's a three horse front tack room on it. Standard width, 610 wide. I'll show you that when we get into the stall area. 7-1 tall, standard height as well on a Cimarron. 19-9 on the floor. So a little bit bigger three horse as far as your floor length compared to most three horses. They're usually gonna be around that 17 foot. And the reason why is a little bit bigger tack room on this one here. But as we start walking through this, one thing you're gonna notice, first and foremost, you look at this trailer straight on, is this nose. So this is Cimarron's V-nose that we're looking at right here. So instead of the normal square nose on it with a little bit of a taper, uh, this is gonna have a lot more uh, taper to it. Now, compared to a lot of competitors that'll really bring theirs to an abrupt point, Cimarron still has a bit of a radius, so it's gonna give us a lot more uh, storage when we actually get into the nose that we'll show you here in a minute. But anybody that's pulled these V-noses will tell you, if you don't need that extra storage for how this trailer pulls and for fuel economy, it is substantial. Uh, once we get a couple like trailers, uh, V-nose and the standard nose here at the lot, we're actually gonna do a little bit of testing, uh, but we just gotta get the, the same two as far as length, height, uh, same setup, one in a V-nose, one in a standard, because we wanna do some testing for you there. But this will make this trailer pull phenomenally well. Underneath the gooseneck, you're just gonna have a manual hand crank jack down there. It's a bulldog jack. <laughs> What's really cool about this type of a trailer and some of the things that have been done underneath here is if you ever decided to upgrade to an electric over hydraulic jack, our parts and service department can help you out with that, but it's really easy. One of the challenges is on these standard width trailers, you'll notice the spare is elevated. Most of the time we have this foot down low, but because of the footprint that an uh, electric over hydraulic jack needs is we're gonna have to relocate this tire anyway so why not just get it out of the way it saves you time and money um, as far as moving that up on our wider trailers not a big deal we can have it lower because the box is wider we can get that that tire away from the jack itself the other thing is is you have your bracing for a battery box so if you do upgrade to this hydraulic jack and you want the battery box here, the framework's already done. Again, saving you time and money. Uh, but this isn't a big trailer, hand crank jack, not a big problem there at all. Um, but if you did want to upgrade to that down the road, you've got that capability to do that. It's white sheeted, that is standard. You can upgrade to silver metallic, charcoal metallic, black. Uh, those are kind of the more popular upgrades. They can do custom colors. Here recently we've done a red trailer, we've done a Pepsi blue, so you can get a custom uh, color if you would like. Now, a little bit bigger front tack room, a five six uh, short wall with a four foot offset. You'll notice we've got two doors here. So very first, our right hand door there, it's a nice big 42 inch wide, and then it's gonna have a four tier blanket pull rack on a gas shock so you can swing it in and out. Brush tray on the door to throw some smaller miscellaneous items in there. And then your fold up step. Look where I'm standing versus the bottom of this door frame. That is a big step, especially if we're carrying items in and out. So by having these fold up steps, it makes a big difference. Even if we kept it as standard with the running board, you can see the variance in the heights there that we're looking at. So it makes it so much easier transitioning in and out. But then we have this left hand door here. It's got an internal two point lock on it. But as you can see, when I open it up, We've got a three-tier uh, saddle rack here. It's on a recessed post within the door itself. These are adjustable, so I can slide them up and down. And you have a tray on the, on the bottom of the door. And that way, if you have this lower saddle here, you wanna tuck your stirrups in there, they'll actually set in that tray. So you're not dragging those going in and out of that tack room there. But same concept as the swing out saddle rack, it's right here on the door. And then it gives you this big, massive opening to be able to get in and out of this front tack room. And again, you don't necessarily have to have that open. As I was showing you, it was closed 
you can still get in and out of the tack room by having that door shut. But in here, you have a ton of room. So first thing as you come in, you're gonna notice this shelf with a clothes rod. So again, five, six short wall. So nice, big, long shelf. It's got a lip to it. It's 18 inches deep. You know, it's great to throw hat cans up there, those type of items. Put your clothes on the clothes rod. They're not taking up space in the back of the truck. And then as we start working up into the gooseneck area, LED light up there. Again, there's that, the inside of that nose. Because of that radius being a little bit wider, you still have a lot of space in there. Very easily throw a bedroll, a sleeping bag. It's eight too long, so it's real deep compared to other competitors. Uh, a lot of other manufacturers run a 7.6 to 7.8, but a lot of depth here. And look, if you're cozy, you get along, two people could easily sleep up there. Over on the right is going to be a plexiglass tray. So that's storage. I'll show you where that plexiglass is, but you can store that right in there. It's got a place to live. On the gooseneck drop wall, 12 inch boot box. Throw some smaller items in there. Use that as a bench if you're hanging out in the trailer. And then if you're hopping up into the nose, it works as a great step there. A little brush tray here. They wanted to just store some other items. You've got bridle hooks, a little set right above your actual uh, light switch, but you're gonna have an additional light right above these tack doors. And then behind where those saddles swing in, you're actually gonna end up with a corner water tank, 25 gallon. You fill from the top, put your hose on the bottom of the ball valve out here, you fill up your uh, buckets right out here in the ground. You don't have to go looking for a hydrant. You can carry water right here at the trailer. Carpeted partition wall, another set of bridle hooks there lining that whole area. So again, just a cool setup and very unique from the standpoint of a large tack room. Like I mentioned earlier, this is a bigger floor length than most three horses. They usually run about a 17 foot floor length. And again, the added length is actually gonna be in that tack room. Um, to give you that nice big opening. So again, you shut your left hand door, then your right hand door over it. Combo lock as well, so you can just punch a code in. You don't necessarily have to have, if this is locked, the combo lock's gonna do you no good. But if you leave this unlocked and you just work off the combo, you can get in and out, send somebody to the trailer. They don't have to have the key. LED button lights on the top rail. Not a big power draw, put out a lot of light really clean look to the trailer a 16 inch awning light kind of here about the middle of the wheel well same thing it's not a, a pedestal awning light that protrudes up and off the trailer you know if you go under trees and brush those can get knocked off um, we like this setup here a lot better so here's the plexiglass so we have stock sides on the tail side there's a groove cut so every Every stock trailer that Cimarron builds is going to actually have this track in there, so you can always add plexiglass after the fact. But it's real simple. I typically cheat with my pocket knife, just kind of put one ahead of the other, and then they slide out. On this one, it's not a big deal, but it's good to keep track of where the plexiglass goes. Tape them together with a uh, painter's tape and a Sharpie and write passenger lower, passenger upper. <laughs> Again, on this one here, that's all the plexiglass you're gonna deal with, so it's not as big of a issue that we see on like stock trailers with slants and different lengths of uh, the plexiglass on each side of the trailer there. We have two 6,000 pound Dexter rubber torsion axles, electric brakes, so the truck's gonna to have to have the integrated brake controller or an aftermarket to operate those. Nitrogen filled tires, that's your green tab. You can put air to these. There's a misconception out there that people can't put air to these tires. You can. If you have a slow leak, it can be patched. You can put air to it, no problem. But the PSI levels aren't going to fluctuate as drastically with air versus the nitrogen fill that we're looking at. Aluminum wheels, that's standard. These are Goodyear tires. One year, no questions asked warranty on these tires. You catch that nail that can't be patched. Road debris, a blowout, they will replace your tire. Lion's head, that's the vendor Cimarron uses, they will replace it for the first year, no questions asked. Bolt-on fender, same thing. Saves you time and money versus a weld-on if you have to replace that, just like that spare tire move, just like 
uh, the battery uh, box framework's already there for you. All right, and when we get to the back here, you're going to notice dual doors. So they're independent, but they're a 60-40 setup. Because it's 610 wide, the standard width, you're going to have a narrower door on the left as we're looking at it, and a wider door on the right. So if you're wanting to offload or load horses, you can literally just crack that right door and it gives you a little bit, uh, little bit bigger opening. As we get to the wider trailers, they go 50-50, uh, but in this instance here, 60-40. Rear rubber bumper could be removed if you wanted to add a rear ramp. So again, a lot of stuff we can do after the fact. Hay racks, hydraulic jacks, rear ramps, those type of items we can add. All right, as we get into the stall area here, we have our two solid dividers. Divider number one is a stud divider. So if you're actually wanting to use this first stall for some additional storage, if you're not hauling three head of horses, you can put some hay, uh, bedding, those type of items in there. The stud divider is gonna allow things to not get underneath the other horses in transit. So this trailer is tipped towards passenger side. Cimarron uses these big springs. You can see they're already trying to pull. If this trailer was level, these would be against the wall. Um, so it wants to pull it towards the driver's side so we don't have to hold them open. Um, but if you put your hands on these dividers, everything's smooth, everything has a radius. Horse safety is number one. Um, so that's a, definitely a big feature there. You could add pads after the fact, anything like that. Kick mats all the way around. This is a good look at the upright post Cimarron uses. It's more of a square versus if you look at the, uh, the roof bows, they're gonna be more of a rectangle. <coughs> Same amount of aluminum in those two, just more of a square. On the uprights, the one on the upright, imagine a 20 foot stick of it. It's like a pencil, one fluid motion. 20 foot stick of this, it's gonna wobble like a noodle. So we have the added strength versus the competitors on the upright post. Why do they put it on the roof then? Well, we want a little bit of a bow to it. And honestly, we don't need the strength because we have this insulated roof that's standard on every single Cimarron. Half inch thick reinforced honeycomb design takes 150 pounds per square foot. I can walk on this roof anywhere and I won't dent it. Versus aluminum roofs where I have to find the roof bows or I'll put a big dent in it. So that's why you see the difference in the uprights versus the roof bows. But, so it'll take substantial hail. More importantly, it'll keep the stall area 20% cooler versus aluminum sheeted roofs. That's a big difference, especially when we get 9,500 degree days. Two-way roof fence, you have three of them, one above each horse, so you can manipulate, manipulate airflow there. A couple more LED lights here in the stall area for you. Nice, big, Optibrite lights, big, clear lenses, puts out a lot of light. So we talked about that roof, we talked about the upright posts. We're gonna talk about the floor. So below what we're looking at here is the industry's best floor, four inch centers. So imagine the hoof size of your horse. Wherever they're standing on this floor, they're standing on a support beam. And the way to tell a quality trailer, uh, quality build of an all aluminum trailer, in my opinion, is look under the floor, you know, from the ground. You're gonna notice centers start to spread apart, more than likely a cheaper trailer. But what happens, you spread centers, you start getting pits, you start getting waves, urine can collect, start to corrode the floor. So at all aluminum trailers, you have to care for them by pulling mats out, power washing them, just general care. This customer opted, no rubber mats, went worm flooring. So this is a permanent unpenetrable floor here, which is awesome, because now you don't have to pull mats out, muck out your solids, power wash it out. The floor is gonna look like it did when it came off the line years down the road, because that worm flooring is gonna protect it. It's a really cool setup in that stall area. A lot of nice little extras as well. On head side, here's a good look. You have their drop windows. So stock sides on hip side, drops on head. Nice big openings. They try to maximize that. You got your jail bars. You just find your sweet spot and you can open them and bring them out. Big massive framework on all their doors and drop windows. This is all framework around here. I challenge you to go look at it, some other manufacturers. One, if there's no framing, it's like a piece of paper in your hand. It could break very easily. It's a prefab window. These here, again, that's all framework. So these are stout. These, we're gonna open and close these every single time. Welded hinges with grease certs. 
so they're easier to maintain. Started getting a squeaky hinge, put some grease to it. It has a brass rod in the middle that will, it has a groove cut into it, so it'll feed that grease throughout the hinge itself. Drop window on, on stall one, a little bit smaller drop window because we've got an escape door going into that stall. So we've got to account for the framework of the door. So the, the window is going to be a touch smaller on that one, but still a good size opening that we're looking at there. And you still get your jail bars as well. Drip rails above each of them <coughs> on all the doors. That way, uh, you know, here in Colorado, we'll get some snow, but 300 days of sunshine. We'll get a warm day, sunshine day, start melting snow. We'll get back to freezing overnight. We want to try to get that moisture away from those openings because that's where you'll get doors froze up and can't open them, or you're gonna be ripping weather stripping off uh, if you're having to pound them open. So really cool setup, uh, very unique trailer. Again, uh, this was actually a spin off of a, a trailer we had on the lot that just wasn't quite what they wanted. So they went this route and built their own. That's what's so fun about it, is building these custom trailers to fit exactly what you want. They are like fingerprints. We can do anything and about everything you want. So I'm gonna give you the stock number on it, just for reference. So if you're interested in it, maybe you wanted to make a couple tweaks, maybe I want it in a four horse. You can just give us this number, 5N231157. Again, it's a 2024 Cimarron North Star, three horse gooseneck, really well equipped trailer. We do take trade-ins. So if you're looking to upgrade, downsize, we can help you out there. Financing's available in delivery we could potentially bring a trailer to your door so give us a call anybody on our sales team can help you out that number is 303-684-3400 thanks for tuning in have a good day